So, this is what I'm calling the micro game mini con. Um, it is going to be five or six games, depending on how well it goes and how much time we've got. Um, and basically, it's just a bunch of really short um, uh, games that either have credit warps or just ones that are really short in general. Um, we're going to start with Pokemon. Um, this is sort of like a, a nearly forgotten category of the Japanese only version of Gen 1. Um, uh, it involves uh, using this door glitch um, that changes where all the doors warp you. Um, the regular any percent that works on any version has come so far down in time that this uh, hasn't been uh, run for a fair while as far as I know. Um, takes around about five minutes. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, um, it's all pretty basic uh, regular gameplay. The only thing that's different is we're going to grab the potion from here. Um, the only requirement to do this route is that we need to get uh, two unique items. So we have to get two items and they can't both be potions, basically. Uh, so we've already got our first item out of the, the PC and then we just need to get the second uh, item, which will be uh, Oak's Parcel. Um, surprisingly, there's no other, like you can't find a, you know, an ether or something floating around. Um, it's all potions up until you get into Viridian Forest, I'm pretty sure. Um, so Oak's Parcel is the um, fastest item to get for this route. Uh, we're just going to pick Charmander here because it's closest. Um, there's a couple of other reasons, like the fact that um, it means that um, he'll pick Squirtle um, and that'll stop him from using, you know, stuff like Growl against us, which will slow this fight down. Uh, we basically just want this fight to go as fast as possible. We don't care if we win or lose. Um, it's actually faster if we lose by a fraction, so we'll see what happens. We're just going to mash attack and see what happens. Um, and then we're just going to go to um, the next town and grab Oak's Parcel, and then we'll just do a glitch, which will... Um, the way it works is that it ties the doors in the game to your step count. Um, so basically, every I, I believe it's every four tiles you walk, um, all the doors change where they'll warp you. Um, so you'll see what I mean uh, in a little bit, but basically we're going to execute this glitch uh, and then walk, I can't even remember the amount of tiles, it's something like 60 something I think. Um, and it will uh, then by going through a sequence of doors we'll end up in the Hall of Fame. Hey, we lost, that was actually a pretty quick fight. Um, it's actually quite rare that you lose if you just match attack. Um, I'm guessing it's like 20% losses or something like that. Um, the sort of holy grail of this category is getting three in-game time. Um, you need to get basically no encounters, rip that, um, and a, a pretty decent fight and you need to not make any mistakes. I've already actually made a couple of like bonking mistakes. I even walked, uh, I walked the wrong way on the first uh, on the first tile, so there's no chance of getting the, the three for this, but uh, yeah, there's, uh, it's surprisingly tight. I can't remember the, um, the amount of leeway that you have, but I think there's like three or four seconds of leeway um, over the course of a, uh, a sub three run, or a sub four run rather. So we'll run in here, match through some text, and grab the parcel. And this is our second item that we need. Um, and the, the thing that makes this glitch possible that isn't possible in the other versions is um, by going into your item menu in this game, uh, in this version of the game, you can press select and not, uh, if by pressing select you can like move items around normally. If you press select and then don't select where the item, to, uh, where to move the item, the game sort of doesn't like clear that value that you've selected select on an item and you can then in a battle so, um, select to swap the item that you wanted to move with the Pokemon effectively. So that's what we're going to do now. We're going to go into the item menu, go to Oak's Parcel and press select. Give the button a work. No, there it goes. Um, and then we'll just back out of the menu and now we're going to get into another encounter. So we'll just run in back and forth here for a little bit. And we're just going to go into the Pokemon menu. If we press A now, weird stuff will happen because it's just trying to change the item. 
Uh, we have to then go into the attack menu just once, like that, for some reason. Um, it, it, like, crashes the game if you don't do that. Um, now most things look normal, but the game's in this, like, hideously broken state and Oak's there for some reason. Um, and we're just basically um, executing a certain number of steps and we're going to walk in here. Now we're at the fly trainer's house and now we're in one of the um, uh, guard houses. Um, and this tree down here doesn't actually exist. You can just walk straight through it. All sorts of things are wrong. And basically if we walk into the second door of the Celadon Mart, this will happen and this is actually the Hall of Fame. Um, so that's effectively time on that game. Um, I'll just go through to the next screen so you can see I'm not lying. Because <laughs> um, it's just a glitchy, horrible mess. But yeah, there you go. Well, in game time of five, that's terrible. <laughs> so one down. Um, that's actually one of the longer runs on this list that I'm doing. Um, I think that probably was about five minutes or something. Um, maybe it was even like going on six. Um, next up uh, is Adam's Family for the Game Boy. Um, you'll just have to give me a moment while I load it in. Uh, yeah, plenty of time for donations if you want to do that. Thank you. All right, uh, Merck gave $5. He said, hi, Ed Goons. Now do <laughs> classical Goons. gas. <laughs> really hard song on guitar, that. Like, spastically hard. Uh, anyway, so this is Adam's family. This is going to go very quickly and there's a lot to explain. But basically, we're going to do a glitch where we get sort of on the top tile of the map. And that'll get us over this wall that gets us into an area where the entrance for the final dungeon should be, but it's not. And I'll show you what I mean in a moment. So I've basically got to hit this for a really short amount of time to get this to work. Uh, I'm not sure if it's one frame, but it's close. There it goes. So you just walk straight over this wall now. Uh, and I'm not sure if this is a glitch or a developer tool or what it is, but if you hold up and jump in front of that barrel, um, it takes you straight to the final area of the game. Um, that room, if you go through the, reg uh, the game normally, you're meant to go uh, rescue all the family members and stuff like that. Um, but um, eventually one of those casks opens and you're meant to be able to run through um, and like use it as a door, basically. Um, but the room actually changes, like the, the sprites are all different, so I'm actually not sure whether or not it's a glitch or like some sort of oversight. Um, but the reality is that you can get to the final room in this game super duper easy. Um, this final room is pretty easy, but if I die anywhere here, um, I'll have to go all the way back to the start of this area, and this is like 90% of the run, so hopefully I don't mess up too much. Um, the goal, just to make the end, the uh, final boss easier, is to get there with two hearts left over, so hopefully I'll do that. Um, there is a faster route for this where you um, go select, uh, you go out, like really far out of your way and pick up this potion that doubles your speed, um, but this is far more safe. Um, you just sneak behind this guy and stab him in the back a bunch of times, and that's time for that game. <laughs> Uh, the, the record for that run, I believe, is something silly like uh, 120 or something really spastically low like that. Um, and that uses the route where you go get the potion. I also I love You Are My Hero. It's hilariously, like, blunt. Um, so that's all I've got for the Game Boy. I've just got to change cartridges real quick. Uh, we've got one on the Super Nintendo. Uh, if you don't like watching me skip this entire game, um, there is a full proper run by an actual runner of the game a little bit later on. Uh, I believe it is uh, a random NPC is the runner for this later on, who will be doing the no major glitches category. Um, but we're going to do the pretty standard um, glitch route. Um, there's also a faster route for this as well. I'm going to be doing sort of the marathon safe easy run that takes about three or four minutes. Um, but uh, there is an even faster one that involves some uh, frame perfect inputs and pause buffering and stuff that I haven't quite worked out yet. So um, if you've seen the, this before in one of these marathons, you might be seeing the same thing again. But um, yeah, there is a, a, an even faster version of this. 
Um, the I, I believe the route is more of the same, like it's about, it's about clipping out of bounds and then effectively just walking to the exit, but the method of clipping out's a lot faster um, and doesn't involve a save and quit like I'm going to be doing. Um, I was having trouble with the select button before and I've got to hit select to open a menu in a little bit, so this might be a little bit rough, but we'll see what happens. Um, so uh, this game uh, has, uh, you can get into uh, this uh, weird state where the game, I don't, I'm actually really not sure 100% what the details of it are, but basically if you save and quit while you're in mid-air, like from jumping down a ledge, um, you will um, be in this state where you, if you're hit by an enemy, you can then go through a wall. Um, the collision doesn't work quite properly. Uh, and because all of the rooms in this game are sort of on the same map, um, you can just walk straight to the, um, the end screen effectively, quite similar to what we did in Pokemon. I should have just gone through that guy. I, I mean, uh, I'm going to have to go through this again in a moment and um, avoid all the enemies, because if you, um, after you've set up the glitch, if you get hit, it breaks it. So um, I'm just sort of taking it safe by default there. Uh, just have to give me a moment while the uh, select button decides whether or not it's going to work or not. There we go, so save and quit. And we just load that up again and go through the same thing again, except this time we can't get hit. Yeah, I'll go around just to be safe. Oh, that's a terrible pattern. Alright, so yeah, now if we uh, get hit by an enemy while we're trying to push left into a wall, uh, we should just go straight through it. Like that. Uh, and now it's literally just a matter of walking to the title, uh, to the uh, credit screen effectively. Um, where if you watch the very bottom of the screen here, you can see me walking out of bounds, you can see Link's cap. And um, now we basically just hold up until victory. Um, yeah, this is a, a really simple run to pick up if you want to learn how to, you know, break an any percent run really easily. Uh, and if you really like it, there is the, uh, the the even faster category if you wanted to go for that. But this is a, this is just a good sort of show off run um, where you can see how um, some of these games can just be skipped with uh, crazy means. Uh, but yeah, if you want to see the, the full run of this, uh, I'm not sure of the exact time, but um, the, um, uh, a random NPC will be running the uh, glitchless category of this a little bit later on today. Um, so that's basically it for that. Um, I've just got to change some cables over while I switch over to the NES. Uh, so just give me a moment. Hopefully not lose the lapel while I'm at it. Uh, while he's setting that up, uh, we got a nine dollar and ninety nine cent donation from Frank Walker, and I'll I'll try my best with this impersonation. Is he from National Tiles? He says, "Hello, <laughs> Frank Walker from National Tiles." <laughs> Hello. So I've got three games on the NES. Sorry, I've lost my lapel, just give me a moment. Die Hard, made famous by Kirk Q in AGDQ 2014, 15, something like that. Um, because I know someone's gonna ask, here you go, here is any percent bad ending. <laughs> Thank you. 
And time, there you go. So that, that was 80% bad ending. <laughs> uh, we'll be doing any percent as well. Um, this uh, run is, it's hard to find specific information on uh, how some of these encounters are set up. Um, I need a certain um, group of people to show up with keys and stuff like that, and they appear to be genuinely random. Um, I'm not 100% sure if that's actually the case, but to me they seem random. Uh, so this may or may not go well. Uh, all I've done so far is gone up to that top floor and I've walked on glass a whole bunch, uh, which has hurt my feet. Now my feet are hurt, it's taking me longer to go up and down these stairs. Um, every time I go up and down these stairs, um, the timer will tick down and once it ticks down to zero, that bottom, uh, the, the number at the bottom right is going to change to L2 and then to L3 and it goes all the way up to L6. Uh, we need to get this up to L3, and that's why we walked on the glass, to slow us down and make it so that these trips take longer. Uh, otherwise, we'd have to do this for far longer to get up to L3. Um, once we get up to L3, uh, we can go down here and get the detonators, and then we can get up to the top floor and try and get the key for the final area. Um, we'll patch our feet up a little bit, because it does actually slow us down a little bit. And we'll hope for some good spawns here. That was a good one. That was pretty good as well. So he had the detonator. Uh, and the only bit of randomness left in the run is the top floor. Um, I should take a fair bit of damage there, actually. Um, it should be fine, though. Um, the final area, the guys, um, there's a four, as far as I know, there's four people on the top floor. Um, we only need one of them, but it's easier just to kill the ones that get in our way. So yeah, sometimes they show up here and it's not great. That went sort of okay, oh, there's one more. Um, but the key guy hasn't show, shown up. Um, every time I get shot uh, from this point on for the record, uh, I'm gonna drop my detonator and I'm gonna have to go pick it up. So yeah, it's a bit of a pain. Hopefully the key guy's in here, but he's not. Um, so we're just sort of gonna have to mill about and see if we can find him. Usually if I go up and check the door and then come back, he'll be sitting in front of the door. So we'll just see what happens. Uh, we need to get the C4 from this room as well. Um, just on the off chance that I've picked it up and not noticed, I'll check the door. No dice. Um, ideally he would have been in that room and like he's at, at this perfect angle where if you just walk in and then shoot diagonally, here he is. Um, then you'll kill him every time, so. Uh, my feet have been, uh, my, my foot meter if you look is uh, down at zero now, so I'm walking really slowly. Um, possibly the only game in the entire world that has a foot meter. Go, man, go. This is actually going to make this uh, rooftop section a little bit rough, but we'll, uh, we should be all right. We've got a fair bit of health. There we go. That wasn't so bad. I'll drop my detonators, though. Um, so there's a, a spot on the roof where you can't get hurt by these explosions that I'm about to do. So we're just going to drop the C4 here and run over here, and we're going to win, basically. And there we go. You win. Game over. Um, I'm pretty sure the record for that is under two minutes. Um, it's spastically fast. Uh, the, the more interesting category, but the, also the much more dangerous category, uh, is the all, I think it's the all kills category. Um, or it might be like the, the good, uh, like the best ending or something like that. And it's like five minutes and you've got to kill uh, everyone. You, you waste all the time like you do in this, but then you just go to the top floor and then you have to just annihilate like 30 people. Uh, and it's really rough, so. Um, I went for the safer one. Um, this game is a, a really uh, uh, fun game from my childhood. Uh, not a lot of people played it. It's by Rare. It's uh, before Battletoads. Um, so uh, it's got a little bit of uh, like very clearly, well, not inspired by because it, it was first, but yeah, very similar to Battletoads music in it. Um, and it's like a, just a digging game about uh, exploration and stuff like that, which is quite a rarity on the NES. Um, all of these warps involve doing all this really weird stuff. Like I had to collect that ladder without triggering loose ground tiles. I had to kill that ghost while under the effects of a mushroom within a certain amount of time. Um, so yeah, there, there's just very arbitrary things that you've got to do for, to get those warps. They're all pretty easy with a bit of practice, but um, yeah, they're just a, a little bit unintuitive. Um, so we're gonna buy some dynamite for the later levels. 
Um, you can actually hope for some good dynamite spawns and skip that, but um, it's just safer to buy a whole bunch and doesn't really take up that much time. Um, and now we're going to see our first bonus level. Um, we're just going to quit out of it, get hit by the first boulder straight away. We don't need the bonus levels. Uh, we actually get gems for doing the warps, so the only thing we'd need it for, uh, need uh, the bonus levels for, is gems. And yeah, we get plenty of those from doing the warps. Um, so we need two ladders. We got one in cavern two. Um, we just got another one there at the top of this cavern. Um, I'm gonna do this turbo baby strat so I don't fall. If I fall, it's gonna cost me about like two minutes. So hopefully I don't do that. Normally I'd try and just like spam through that as quickly as possible, but yeah. Um, next level's the one with the Battletoads music. Um, it's got, uh, it's, it's similar to the ice levels in Battletoads, but it's a little bit different. Um, relatively easy level. It's just a spot at the end where I'm probably gonna die. Um, there's a, um, a short, um, but we're gonna take a fall and it's gonna take most of our health just because it's the fastest way there. And then there's uh, these spike things that we're gonna have to try and squeeze past. Uh, and the jump to um, skip the spike traps is a little bit unintuitive. You've got to go a lot earlier than it seems. Hey, I made a pass, there you go. Um, usually die on that spike pole, so. Um, next level is pretty boring. It's full of, um, it's got all these hidden passages, but since we know where we're going, um, there's not a lot to say about it. Uh, probably some time for a donation or two, if you'd like. Or a plug. Uh, just a reminder, we do have uh, some donation incentives um, for later today and for the weekend. Um, There's one, uh, one for Link to the Past that is being run today. Um, you can choose the file name at four up to four characters long. At the moment, we've got two names. Bra is at 1095 and Yeet is at 3720. You can add a new name if you want or support either of those. Uh, on on the weekend, uh, Spy vs. Spy, there's still a bidding war uh, between black and white. There's no donations for that yet, so if you do don't donate, remember to uh, add what you want your donation to go towards in the donation. Thank you. All right, bit of a rough start there, but we should be about fine. We've got a spare life since I didn't die in Cavern 6 like I usually do, so it's looking pretty good now. That start part is quite difficult. The, um, uh, the dinosaur dude is um, hurling uh, eggs uh, sort of exactly where you want to jump, and if you get hit by one of the eggs, it sort of stops your momentum and you just fall to your death and take a ton of fall damage. Um, dinosaurs really love diamonds in this game, so if you drop a diamond in front of them, they'll just walk straight to it, so that's how we get this guy out of the way. Uh, and that's time for that game. Uh, record for that game is about 340, I believe. Um, most of the time to save in that is all, like all of this really finicky stuff about jumping and just not losing frames everywhere, basically. and like. Just everything you do apart from running costs time, like getting out off ladders incorrectly and stuff like that. Um, yeah, it all just takes little bits of time. Um, I'll just have a look at my time real quick. Yeah, we've got tons of time. Um, so this is sort of a, a bonus at the end game, which basically I was going to play whether or not, uh, whether we were um, doing okay for time or not, basically. So um, a lot of people have probably seen the um, the Mario 3 uh, wrong warp. Um, there is a, a pretty consistent setup for it now, so um, we'll see if it goes. It's still not 100% consistent, and um, I'm gonna have to try and work out the um, uh, this new TV, and I'll have to hopefully not fall in a hole on the first level. That'd be pretty good. Um, I was actually pretty happy with the fact that I got the uh, the launch into the into the clouds, but hopefully I can do that again. Oh no. There we go. It's probably worth pointing out that I'm not actually a runner of any of these games, so I'm, I'm just basically uh, 
trying to fake my way through every one of them, just knowing enough to get myself by. But uh, I know some of the strats, so hopefully it puts on a decent show. Uh, furiously what? I, 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 did, I didn't hear the word after that. <laughs> this level's really hard to do fast. I don't know how the top runners do this like consistently. This is like the turbo baby strat and it's like really hard to do fast even this. So. Um, I always lose P speed there, and you've just sort of got to mash your way over here. Um, this run is basically, as you'd expect, of a warpless run. If you haven't seen the, the credit warp run before, we're going to get both warp whistles. Uh, normally, you'd use both warp whistles to get to um, world eight. We're going to use it to get to world seven, where we can do a, um, a wrong warp sort of glitch. Oh no, um, you, you, you can, um, if you do a, a couple of frame perfect jumps there, I'm not sure if they're frame perfect, it's, it feels pretty close to frame perfect. Um, you can actually grab the uh, leaf without um, losing your P-speed. Um, it's, uh, it's pretty tight and I actually got like all of the hard stuff there. I just did a, uh, at the very end I did a, a jump that was slightly too small. Uh, it looks really cool when you get it, so I'm a little bit sad that I missed it, but anyway. Um, so yeah, we go to world 7-1. Um, pipes in this game that you can go up and down have this weird property where if you uh, enter them at a, a pixel perfect point uh, on the side of them, they'll let you go in the wrong direction and it just causes the game to get really confused. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to start putting all of these uh, shells and enemies in very particular places and we're going to kill these enemies to sort of free up the sprite uh, areas. And basically what we're, what we're going to do uh, at the end is we're going to trigger a glitch that just starts executing everything past a certain point in the Ness's RAM and we're going to arrange these shells in very particular places that runs the three bytes of code that will jump us straight to the credits if everything works well. And I don't screw up. Oh, dude, I think that's first try. <laughs> it's a little bit hard to tell. I'm not used to this TV, but I'm pretty sure that was spot on. Um, deliberate hit there. We want to be big Mario for here. We want to be small Mario by the end. Uh, and we're going to take a hit from this shell. So this is the last one we need to line up. We're going to come up, come up here, which will line ourselves up on the right uh, pixel. And we're going to go down while he's still uh, showing up. Now we've just got to go down this pipe in the wrong direction, which can take a little while sometimes. There we go. Now we basically wait and we press A and we see what happens. Uh, a few things can happen. Um, the screen can just fill entirely with garbage. Um, I think that means I screwed up, but I'm not actually sure. It happens a fair bit, uh, fairly often when I feel like I've done everything right, so I'm not sure. We might get the credit screen, but it'll be all dark and nasty looking and the game will freeze. That means I did everything right, but it just didn't work. Uh, and hopefully what we'll see is we'll just jump to the credits. Simply one button from here. Yay, there we go. <laughs> And uh, that'll, that'll be time for this, you know, block. Um, I'm pretty happy that we got, got uh, the extra game in and we're still under estimate. So thank you very much. All right. Thank you, Potato Handle, for, Potato Handle for all those runs.